Welcome back everyone. We're here for our final month of our summer block of the month, the Color Rhapsody. Now you're probably ahead of me at this stage. You've got all of your applique done. I don't. It's been a crazy busy month with travel, but it doesn't stop me from showing you how now to sew these pieces together. We're going to end up with all of the applique done first. That's still very critical, but we're going to sew these pieces together all the way around in a ring before we put in the center piece or put on the outside corners. Now in order to do that I would just start with the top piece and now I do have applique behind it but this is the sample I'm going to use for you today. Sew this piece to this piece so I put it right sides together and sew and I will show you specifically how to do that. Then join the next one, the next one, the next one, and join them all the way around. And when you sew this seam, you will now have this ring. You have a choice to make at that point as to whether you want to put on your corner borders first or if you want to set this piece in. I'm going to recommend that we do a sample first. And once you determine how easy it is to set these corners in, then it really doesn't matter whether you put this in or if you put your four corners on last. So let me show you how easy it is to put these pieces together using the stay stitching and the registration marks that were so important during our first month. When you bring two pieces over to the sewing machine and they're both right sides up, you'll notice that you will actually see the registration marks because the paper was on this side and we marked the registration marks on the right side. Now, when you put these right sides together, you need to make sure at the beginning that this angle on, in this case it's the green one on top, is perfectly aligned with this angle on the blue one below. And the stay stitching has to line perfectly on top of the stay stitching. Now one of the things that um, we are used to in sewing is that we're used to having quarter inch seams so that the edges of the fabric match. In this case, the edges may not match because you personally trimmed your seams. Now, as I stitch, I need to stitch that breadth distance to the left of the stay stitching because our paper was a breadth distance and the edge of the paper was the stitching line. So the stay stitching is now going to get trapped into the seam allowance as we sew these together. So I am making sure that my needle is penetrating just to the left of the stay stitching. The other important thing is to make sure that the stay stitching on the top piece is perfectly aligned with the stay stitching on the lower piece. And then I'm going to be looking for these two registration marks to match perfectly. This is a no pins technique and this is why it's a no pins technique. And that's because as we continue to sew, I'm sewing a few stitches and I am peeking underneath and I, to align everything. And if I have it all pinned together, I won't be able to do that. Now then, when I look at this particular piece here, I'm noticing that this registration mark, the green one, is an eighth of an inch advanced of the blue one. So I need to give the blue one a slight tug so that they will match back up continue doing this all the way around making sure the registration marks match I really love this technique of being able to simply look under see the registration marks make sure that they match and see I need to tug the blue one ever so slightly to get it back in position and align the stay stitching on top of the stay stitching and continue to sew just a little bit. After I've done a few stitches, it's time to play peekaboo again. That's what I call looking underneath to see that the registration marks and the stay stitching continue to match. Now I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna stop right here and just show you. The blue one has a wider seam allowance than the green one. So I'm not matching the edges of the fabric. I am truly matching the stay stitching as I go. And now when I get to this angle, I want it to be on this angle so that when I sew off, that I end up having a really smooth finish for this. Now let's take a look because when I take this out of the machine, the first thing that I do is I look right here. And I'm so happy because now the stay stitching 
continues right across. Then I will turn it to the other edge and see how I did at the beginning. And I'm happy again because this day stitching now matches the one next to it. And as I look along the seam, I'm looking to make sure that there's no stay stitching showing along that seam. Now, which direction do you press this? You can press it any direction that you like. As long as you press them the same, in this case maybe I'll have the, the blue one going under the green and I would do that on all seams so that the blue one is always under and the green one is always over. You can choose how you want to do that. But that makes a beautiful seam and that's the way you will stitch these all the way around. To make a sample so that you can practice your outside curves or your inside uh, setting curves, Take about a 15 inch square of freezer paper, fold it on the diagonal, and draw kind of a, a gently flowing curved line from that center fold. Of course, add unevenly spaced registration marks, fold the paper together, and then you can easily see your pencil line through the paper, and all you need to do is make a ghost tracing to the inside. And then open that up and add both the lines and the registration marks for the opposite side. Cut the freezer paper into two templates and then just as we did before use each of those templates to press to a fabric, do the stay stitching and then transfer the registration marks into the seam allowance. Then trim the seam allowance to slightly less than a quarter of an inch. Now on an inside curve watch this cut but don't cut too far and then fold that leg of the L up and then you'll be able to continue cutting without actually making an X cut or cutting into a part of the seam allowance that you don't want. Now slice right into that corner. Each corner that you're going to set in has to have this tiny little snip right into the 45 degree angle. Now I position this so that I have basically a backwards L but when I put the fabrics right sides together my green fabric in this case is an L. Take the leg of the L, the bottom leg, and fold it back exposing the snip right onto the very point of the place where you're going to inset this corner. We're going to start sewing just near the corner. We will do the rest of this later but just near the corner at the last registration mark before the corner. Match those up, align the stay stitching, and with your L of the corner folded back out of the way, you'll simply stitch right down to this point. As you get to the point, you want to be sure that there's no tuft of unsewn fabric in that point, and then as you sew off, don't sew on the green, sew on the lower fabric, which is in this case the blue. So I stitch to the corner and then stitch off only onto a single layer of fabric to secure that. Now I can finish that side by flipping it over and doing what we've already done which is sewing the simple curves, matching the stay stitching, matching the registration marks and sewing all the way to the end. Now I look. I'm happy that that's matching. So I will now continue. In order to continue, position your work so that you can now flip your other border right sides together at the snip and exposing that snip and this time you will start stitching on the single layer of blue onto the corner and keeping the stay stitching aligned and keeping again the registration marks aligned and once you do that simple corner, you're then going to be able to stitch this all the way to the end. The corner is the place that's the most fussy. So once you've done a couple of exercises on this, I think you'll be ready to do this on your Colorful Rhapsody. I look at the edges to make sure they're okay. Look at both edges. And now let's look at the point right there in that set in corner. I think it looks great. Press. I like to press so the borders go to the outside, but whatever seems to be most logical, and you have a beautiful set-in corner. And that's how easy it is to do these wonderful curved set-in corners. 
The interior is no different. There's just a lot of them strung together. So find a place that you want to start, flip it to the right side, make all the snips that you need to as you work through because you have to snip into those corners and simply work your corners all the way around till you have this, the center set into your quilt. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you do your borders first or your center first, just get started. Always make a sample, learn the technique so you feel comfortable about it. I hope you've enjoyed the Colorful Rhapsody. I know I have enjoyed being with you. It's been really exciting and I certainly want to see your project, so be sure to post them on thequiltshow.com if you possibly can. Until next time, this is Ricky Timms and have a colorful day with your Colorful Rhapsody.